Okay, so as we've been looking at so far, um, the equation of a circle, if the equation of the circle is in this form that we have here, then it's so easy to instantly read off that the center is just AB and the radius is R. But what if the equation wasn't in this form? So the question I have here is it wants us to find the center and the radius of the circle that has this equation. We've got x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. This is definitely in a strange kind of form. It doesn't look like the one that we're familiar with. And I've got a hint. Have we seen a method in a previous chapter that allows us to turn an x squared term and an x term into a single expression involving x? Well, if you have read the slide carefully, you will have seen at the top that we can use completing the square in order to do this. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to rearrange to collect the x's and y's together. That just makes completing the square a little bit easier. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. And then the next thing that I will do is I will complete the square for x, for the x's and the y's. Now, if you can't remember how to complete the square, you need to make sure that you can look over this. I'm not going to be reteaching it here. So completing the square on this first section that I have here is just going to be x minus 3. You half the x coefficient and square it. And then because this would produce an extra 9 here, we need to remove the extra 9 that has just been generated. Now, when I do this section that I have here, you're going to have y plus half that coordinate, uh, sorry, half that coefficient there. So you get y plus 1 squared. And you're going to have to counteract this extra 1 that is generated by subtracting a 1 there. And then at the end, you still got that minus 6. So we end up with x minus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals, putting everything onto the other side, because that's what the standard equation is going to look like, the radius will be on the other side, that's going to be equal to 16, which happens to just have a nice square root here. So the centre of this circle very clearly is 3 minus 1, and the radius, you could either write r or you could write radius as this, and the radius is equal to the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay, so we've got the center, we've got the radius, and we've definitely got that bit right there. So I'm going to just do one more example here, and then you're going to have a go at doing one yourself. Um, again, it's just going to be some, some practice of seeing um, completing the square. So this is quite nice to sort of tie this into some of that previous topic. And you'll see also now why completing the square was so important. So the circle with centre t and radius r has this equation. Find the coordinates of the centre and show that the radius is equal to 5. So I'm going to rearrange it to begin with. So that's x squared minus 20x plus y squared minus 16y plus 139 is equal to 0. So half that 20 to get this and counterbalance that extra 10 squared by removing it. We're then going to get y minus 8 squared. I'm going to counterbalance that extra 64 that comes from the minus 8 being squared by subtracting it. And then I've got the 139 equals 0. So that gives me x minus 10 squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to, because we need it to be on the other side, so when they all go to the other side, I'm going to have 164 minus 139, which is 25. So for part A of the question, the coordinates of the centre, the centre is just going to be um, 10, 8. OK, and then part B of the question, the radius is just going to be the square root of 25, which is 5, which is exactly what they said in the question. So I have one on this page here, which either you can pause and have a go at yourself, or you might like to see what I've got to say about part B, because there's something interesting in that second part that we've got there. So if you want to pause and have a go at this yourself, then do. Um, this one is a new spec question, so you'll see actually the marks are a lot smaller here. OK, so a circle has this equation. Again, it's not in standard form, so we're going to need to do some calculations where k is a constant. 
First of all, we're going to find the center and then we're going to stick the range of possible values for k. Let's have a look at this. So I'm going to rewrite it in the sensible order. So that's x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 10y equals k. So completing the square on the x part, so it's going to be x minus 2 squared. Make sure you remove the extra 4 that would be generated. And then you've got y plus 5 squared. Make sure you remove the extra 25 that's generated from that 5 being squared. And that is all equal to k. So we get x minus 2 squared plus y plus 5 squared. Getting it all onto one side would be k plus 25 plus 4 which is k plus 29. So the center, which I'm going to call c, is just going to be 2 minus 5. My quick way of saying this is whatever that sign is, it's opposite. Whatever that sign is, it is opposite. Now part b of the question says, state the range of possible values for k. So I guess I'm going to look at this section that I've got here. And I want to think, what on earth are the restrictions on this? So think about the circle equation, the standard circle equation. Let's just keep it really simple. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. What do we know about this right hand side here? Well, in order for it to be a circle, this is going to have to be, uh, the radius is going to have to be bigger than zero. And if the radius is bigger than zero, in order for it to be a circle, then this right hand side has got to be bigger than zero. In other words, this r squared term has got to be bigger than zero. It wouldn't make sense for it to be negative because it's been squared. And if it was equal to zero, well, it wouldn't be a circle. It would have a, it would be a, a point that has no radius at all. In other words, it would just be a dot. So this means that this section that I've highlighted in green, k plus 29, has got to be bigger than zero in order for it to be a circle, which means that k has got to be greater than minus 29. So let's just confirm that we got these right from the mark scheme. So we got the center is two minus five, which we have, and that k is greater than minus 29. Okay, so that is enough information for you to have a good go at exercise 6c. And we'll be moving on to some intersections and some things in the next part. Good luck with that, and I'll speak to you soon.